I feel like I'm a million, a billionaire with my health and, and it's free. It's free knowledge. Knowledge is free. Knowledge is power. John, how did you find Carnival? Uh, Dave, I um, was gaining weight. I'm, I'm 58 years old currently, and I was gaining weight in my mid to late 30s and 40s and early 50s. And uh, like many people, I, I tried different restrictive diets, counting calories and, and uh, taking things out. And uh, many of them worked when I worked really hard at them and I would go to the gym and work my butt off. And sometimes I would get down to my goal weight. Uh, and then as soon as I did, you know, a diet, you start something, it's a diet, it has a timeline. And because it's a diet, you go off the diet. So I would put the weight back on and a hell of a lot more. And then I would go on another, tried the cookie diet. I tried, I remember deal a meal with the little cards and the slots from Richard Simmons. I tried so many different uh, ways. And then I heard about keto a little over five years ago. And my, I knew nothing, absolutely nothing. I just, just watched one video of a, of a, very muscular, lean gentleman standing in front of a whiteboard explaining what it was and how to start this thing called a ketogenic diet. So uh, give it a try, right? So I, 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 it was a learning curve and I, I put an app on my phone to track macronutrients, which I didn't know what they were. I, didn't, I knew nothing about uh, nutrition at all. So tracking protein, moderate protein, high healthy fat and less than 20 total grams of carbohydrates a day. And I did this and followed the advice of trying not to have seed oils, throwing things out in my kitchen, shopping around the edges of the grocery store. I watched a few more videos and I added on to my limited knowledge base at the time. And boom, the weight started to come off. And I thought to myself, in just two weeks, I thought, this is powerful. This is so there's something to this thing. So of course I dug deeper and one YouTube video led to another YouTube influencer and doctor and nutritionist. And I started clicking subscribe and adding to my YouTube subscriptions. I didn't have any that were nutrition based. And uh, now I have to weed them out. I have so many now. And uh, I just started learning and growing and making incremental changes to my life based on what I learned and there's so much to learn. And within a few months, I was quickly at my goal weight. And I noticed it wasn't just the, the weight that I lost, my lower back pain disappeared because I had on and off, I had inflammation in my lower back since my late twenties. And it would, I just would say, oh, I have, it's flaring up. And it would be so bad, I would have to wheel myself around in a chair I'm a, I was a teacher. I taught for 34 years in middle school. And when, when my lower back would flare up, I would have to roll myself around in the chair, around the classroom and up the hallway. Sometimes I actually had crutches. I wore a TENS unit and I would turn up the electricity and trick my brain into not feeling the pain. And then I would come home and put ice packs on and all these things. Uh, took a lot of uh, over-the-counter medicine, which thankfully didn't kill my kidneys or my liver. <laughs> and uh, uh, I had obsessive compulsive disorder with my fingers. I bit my nails to the point of bleeding. Um, I had atrial fibrillation. I had AFib that I was diagnosed with about 10 years ago. So these things I'm mentioning evaporated. I didn't have the desire to rip at my fingers anymore. And mean, this is while you were on keto. This is while I was on keto the first year. Uh, the lower back pain disappeared. I didn't have any back pain for the rest of that whole first year. And uh, my AFib, I decided, I, I learned that one of the medicines for AFib raised my blood sugar. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, I'm on a keto. I can't have that. <laughs> and I measured my ketones in my blood with a keto mojo meter. And I validated that, oh my gosh, I can't get below 100. 
it was always above 100. And that was because of the beta blocker, which was one of the two drugs for my atrial fibrillation condition. So I slowly, with the con consultation of my cardiologist who really didn't consult me, he wanted me to stay on it. So I ignored him and I slowly, and I don't recommend this for anybody. I'm just talking about my story for me. Over three months, I weaned myself off of the two medicines. And I haven't been in AFib. I, I didn't go into AFib without the medicines. Um, so many things occurred other than the weight loss. You know, we all, many of us come to, to carnivore. I started out as keto to lose the weight. And I discovered that my emotional health got better. The, the, I had uh, sugar highs and sugar lows from all of the carbohydrates. And I was depressed at times, um, not manic depressed, but I would have some serious emotional times I could tell. And I could tell now because I look back in retrospect at, and I look at how stable I am now. I am level or up all the time. I don't have emotional downtimes ever anymore. And I didn't realize this is the way I'm supposed to feel. Uh, but I wasn't feeling that way for decades. Uh, mental clarity. Just I, I, I realized my comprehension and my ability to pull words out of my brain that I wanted to use to express myself. Just it's effortless now. Whereas, you know, as a teacher, as before, I would I would struggle sometimes and I'd have to have note cards to make sure that I found the correct vocabulary. And I just I can tell my mental alertness, I'm sharper, you know, eyesight's better, hearing's better, my sense of smell is better. So I found keto first. And for the whole year, this was just the greatest thing. I hate to say since sliced bread, we're not supposed to eat bread, but it's just like a new invention in my life. Uh, like I found God, you know, that's how amazing it was. It was my health. And uh, I did start this YouTube channel way back then. And I called myself the carb addiction teacher, right? Because I'm a teacher. And I kind of stole Dr. Robert Sivers's uh, lingo, who sees the carb addiction doc. And I really related to a lot of his teachings because I realized I have a, a serious addiction to sweet things. And, and, and the real definition of what addiction is, I, I, I am an addict to sugar. So I can't have any, I must abstain hundred percent and I'm, I'm really successful that way. So then during this keto time, I was counting the carbs and I was eating everything low carb, which included a lot of plants and some berries. And, uh, I had a lot of spinach, a lot of cinnamon, a lot of turmeric, a lot of dark chocolate, a lot of rhubarb. You probably know where I'm going with this. Um, a lot of almond flour. And uh, I woke up one morning at 3 a.m. with a serious back pain. And I ignored it until about 7 a.m. to the point where I was on the floor in so much pain. And um, I went to the hospital and they did a scan and saw the calcium oxalate kidney stone. And it had just left the nephron of my kidney and it was moving in my ureter and that's the pain I was feeling. When they move is when they hurt. And uh, they gave me medicine for pain. They gave me medicine to encourage it to wash out into the bladder and eventually out my urethra. And they sent me home and I passed it in the toilet and I picked it up and I saved it and I took it back in and had it analyzed to find out that it was a calcium oxalate kidney stone. So then I Googled oxalates and that's when I adjusted my way of eating from keto to keto vor. And I took out all, I didn't just take out the high oxalate plants. I took out all plants that had oxalates. And uh, I, again, another learning curve. I learned what oxalates were and that's so many. And then that led me to other anti-nutrients in plants like lectins and phytates and saponins. So uh, I was on keto for for three years and I only drank coffee and had a, um, I had avocado 
And sometimes I had asparagus or broccoli with any of the meat that I had for dinner. I had beef, lamb, pork, poultry, fish, and eggs. And I added little pieces of, of vegetable. And I did that for three years and never got an, I did not get another kidney stone because I heard you could get another one. I was just very careful with the oxalate dumping. Uh, mm -hmm. I did get some other oxalate dumping symptoms. I had an issue with an eyelid and, a, and an oxalate came out of my eye. And every once in a while, I would get a flu-like symptom where I wasn't sick and I assumed it was an oxalate dumping. So mm -hmm. I may have a few years of getting all of these oxalates out of my body, but it is getting better. And then I decided, all right, my life has improved so much from the standard American diet to keto, from keto to ketovore, three years, I'm going to knock this up and I'm going to up my game and I'm going to stop drinking coffee and I'm going to take out all the rest of the plants, which really wasn't that much at that point. Um, oh, I was also doing coconut, coconut cream, coconut butter. So I, I took out all plant related things and which was like night it, it it was effortless i didn't even notice a difference i had very few plants in my in my life at that point and i noticed my it upped my game even more i slept better i uh my energy level was m even stronger everything was heightened just that much more on carnivore so the last year and four months i've been a hundred percent carnivore i don't even put mustard on my hamburger. I don't, I don't touch it. I try not to. And, uh, I have never felt better. My, my mood, everything is just even that much better on carnivore. So I uh, changed my name to the carnivore teacher on YouTube. Um, and, uh, that's when I, when I do teach, however, and I make a video, I, I come from that angle, but I also talk to people who are ketovore and are keto because, low carb, no seed oils is where it really is. And uh, some people want to put the plants in there. I, I hate to be a uh, absolutist and say everybody should never touch plants. Um, I don't ever want to touch them again. But some people you can't say that to a lot of people they don't that's not where they are at the moment in their life. I wasn't there. Um, at times in my life, if someone had told me I had to do it, I wouldn't listen. So I came to carnivore in my own time and in my own way. And I like to meet people where they are and encourage them to think about it, not necessarily to become a carnivore, but think about the benefits that you can experience. Uh, and, uh, people tend to respond to that. I want to help people. Uh, I don't have any monetization on my channel and I don't sponsor or sell anything. I'm a retired school teacher. Uh, I receive a pension. So I'm doing this for fun for me. It means a lot to me because my life, I feel like I'm a million, a billionaire with my health and, and it's free. It's free knowledge. Knowledge is free. Knowledge is power and YouTube is free. So, and I have the technology and the equipment. So, and the time, so I'm just so motivated to share because if, if one person, yeah, I'll give you an example today, um, what was it? Somebody watched a video I put out today about salt. And one of the things I mentioned in my salt video is that if you buy Morton's salt on the store shelf that has the iodine in it and you read the ingredient labels, it has dextrose in the salt, which is a form of sugar. And they use it as an anti-caking agent so the salt doesn't stick together. And three people wrote back to me in comments, oh my gosh, I ran to the shelf and read my ingredients. I threw my salt out. I didn't realize I was getting dextrose. I thought I was being so good. And so, you know, just I never know who I'm going to reach and, and, and how uh, I can help other people as other people have helped me. So I, I just want to be a ripple in the pond and uh pass it on when you went on to carnivore like your your intention was to you know up your game even further so what changed for you between being say ketovore and carnivore from ketovore to carnivore 
my sleep improved, my, my uninterrupted sleep. I would get up three or four times a night, um, one or two times to go to the bathroom, but three or four times just wake up, restlessness. I have, you know, an app on my, my Apple Watch and I have the sleep number bed. So I have all the little trackers and I can see when I've moved around and when I've gotten it. It even tells you what your heart rate is throughout the night. So I can geek out on the statistics and that improved. And I can tell I'm, I'm getting a more restful sleep and sleep is one of the biggies in health, stress, you know, cortisol, all that stuff. Um, what else improved? I, I think my, I didn't crave sugar because I was off of sugar on ketovore. But when I went carnivore, I, I stopped thinking about the keto treats and snacks that I used monk fruit, I used stevia, I used erythritol, um, I used allulose. I tried to keep getting at my addiction. <laughs> and uh, even though those don't um, stimulate an insulin response, usually, unless it's the cephalic phase insulin response, they still turned on that little bit of an addiction switch in my brain. And I would think about making a keto brownie, keto cheesecake, um, things that had those supposed healthy sweeteners in there. And uh, going carnivore, you don't use those. And so I noticed when I got off of those, the thoughts went away of wanting a keto treat. I, I still kept my addiction a little bit alive when I had them. So carnivore kind of, it helps, it helps with, with the OCD with my fingers and the fixations and the emotional and then the addiction to sugar. I really think that carnivore helps people with the the mental aspect of addiction so i've heard stories of people who were smokers still right and when they went carnivore they didn't even expect to quit and they just didn't want to smoke anymore or when they tried to quit it was so effortless because your body is is healing from the inside out the ketones in the brain are so healthy that that addiction neural pathway in the brain is healing up when you eat carnivore and so quitting addictions tends to be much easier, almost effortless. So th that's just some of the things I've discovered switching it up to carnivore. What is your pattern of eating throughout the day? My pattern of eating throughout the day, I know I'm supposed to eat when I'm truly hungry and stop when I'm satiated, when it doesn't taste good anymore, but I'm still tied to the clock. Uh, that's one thing I haven't tackled. All my life, I've had breakfast at this time and lunch at this time and dinner at this time sharp, right? All my life. So I don't eat what we call breakfast anymore, you know, because I, I want my intermittent fast to last as long as possible from dinner the night before until my first meal, which is around noon, 1130 or 12 o'clock in the day. And, uh, if I'm not hungry, I still eat because it's just, it's that time of the day and I kind of shouldn't do that. I know that. But uh, my first meal, I always have uh, pasture raised eggs. I like them over easy so that when I scoop them on top of my meat, the yolk breaks onto the meat. That's my favorite carnivore meal in the world is runny egg yolks on whatever meat I'm eating. And the meat is usually left, uh, cut up leftover steak from the night before. And uh, I'll try to have a small piece of sockeye salmon, wild caught, or wild caught shrimp, or or sardines, to get my my big dose of uh, omega three. And um, even though I'm getting them in the eggs too, in the choline, and just and, and it's interesting. I'm sitting there with my plate. If you can visualize my plate with the little sardines or the shrimp, my runny egg yolks on top of my either ground beef or leftover ribeye from the night before. And it's on the plate. And I, I look at it differently now. I look at it and say, this is my protein. This is my fat. This is my choline. This is my omega-3. These are my little bit of omega-6s. Like I have this nutritional knowledge that I was not aware about before, aware of before. And I look at food that way now. I look at what I'm eating as my nutritional fuel 
no matter where I am, even if I'm at a restaurant or whatever, that's how I look at food now. And, and I enjoy it. I love my food. I salt to taste with the Redmond Real Salt. I love that salt. And then I don't eat anything until the clock says it's dinner time. Again, I could probably skip dinner if I don't feel like it, but I'm still tied to the clock. And uh, it's around six o'clock. And I have, and I guess I'm a little hungry, but I probably could wait till the next day sometimes. But I make a dinner and it's always either a steak of some kind, some kind of beef uh, or hamburger, um, lamb. I love lamb loins and lamb chops. And um, I don't do fish at night. Sometimes I'll poach two eggs so I can break that yolk again on top of whatever I'm eating. And I, sh I smear butter on all my steaks. I love it and salt to taste. And uh, let's see, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll make a carnivore lasagna or I'll make a carnivore pizza, which is the ground beef crust, you know, and, uh, but that's pretty rare. So it's, it, it's more about what the food has for me and the, the, the protein ingredients. I look at it that way and uh, I love it and I'm full and uh, mm. I'm full right now. I mean, my time it's uh 820, almost 820 PM in the United States, eight at six o'clock, went for a walk. Mm. I don't need to eat again until noon tomorrow, probably till six o'clock tomorrow night, if I'm really honest with myself. So that's, that's how I eat. And mm. it doesn't change that much. It doesn't vary. Uh, just the different meats. I try to, you know, switch yeah. them up. Sometimes I'll have chicken. Sometimes I have pork, mostly mm. beef. How has your eating changed from way back when you were doing a regular diet before you went keto? Um, oh, gosh. How has your feeling changed about food during the, like you're still quite regimented, you said, with um, times. Is, is anything different about your feeling about food or your feeling about hunger or your, your need to have food with you? Since very, you know, you're in a regular diet. Very good question. No one has asked me that question ever. And uh, as you were asking it, I'm like, wow, that's that's a powerful question because that explains the addiction aspect that I had with food. Uh, food, before when I was on the standard diet, sta I call it the standard world diet now. It's not just America. Uh, I, I didn't eat a lot of fast food because I knew that wasn't healthy for you. I was always health conscious, uh, but my knowledge base was lacking. So I thought a lot of fruits and vegetables were good for me. So I ate a lot of fruit and I used to love to eat it in yogurt. And I would add honey because honey is good for you. I thought, you know, that's what I was told. I wasn't doing the refined sugar. I was doing honey. Now, of course, I know glucose and fructose is glucose and fructose, no matter what form it's in. But back then, I thought there were different kinds of good and bad sugar. So I was still health conscious. I was eating um, I around the holidays. I, you know, I pigged out on the Halloween candy. I, in, in the United States, we have Halloween on October 31st, the Easter candy, all the Christmas cookies and snacks. Because I'm a sugar addict, I couldn't have two cookies. I had 10 cookies. I would sit with a cup with milk with my favorite show on TV. And that was, and I put my feet up and I would take the whole stack of cookies and eat the whole bin of cookies because I couldn't stop. Never got a signal that I was satisfied. And I, I guess I was giving myself a dopamine hit of pleasure, just like a drug. And uh, I would do that with pizza. And, you know, I was raised Italian. So we had growing up a lot of pasta, a lot of uh, rigatoni and spaghetti. And every gathering and every meal had Italian food. So lots of grains, lots of pasta, um, waffles, pancakes. Uh, I wasn't a potato guy. French fries, of course, I ate a lot of with lots of high fructose corn syrup ketchup on it, you know. And uh, my thought pattern then was, I, I want it. I want it. I want it. 
it, it, I didn't think about the nutrition. Maybe I read, oh, it has this many calories. Oh, it has all this fat. I shouldn't get that. We'll put that back because they told me fat was bad, you know, and uh, never looked at the sugar and carbohydrate content. Never looked about seed oils because I, you know, I don't know, used to make cake with the Wesson oil and pour the half a cup of Wesson oil in to make the brownies. Didn't know any better. So my, uh, the way I perceived food was it, it looked good. It tasted good. It was colorful. I wanted it. I want it now. Everybody's having it. Um, I would eat to excess to until I get sick or I'd have bowel problems. I all my life, you know. And when I was younger, my body was resilient. I had a lot of bandwidth, and it didn't show too much until my early thirties. And then it caught up with me. You know, I ate terribly most of my life, and uh, I could show you a picture of my face, how puffy I was. And, uh, you know, my lower, you know, all the issues I mentioned with my back and my AFib and my OCD and my emotions, um, that was all because of that food I was eating. I perceived that food as almost a drug. I, I, I perceived it as something that made me feel good or quelled an emotional event, an emotion or boredom. You know, if, uh, when I lived up north, I live in Florida right now, but when I lived in the colder climates and we were snowed in, we were bored. I ate out of boredom, got heavy in the winter. Um, people eat for so many different reasons, and I ate for all of those reasons back then. And this time I don't. I don't eat that mm. way now. So that that's the biggest change is the reason yeah. for eating. Yeah. You know, th this is five years total from keto through ketovore carnivore mm -hmm. what kind of reaction do you get from people around you like if you go for dinner with friends or um you know you go to family um how how do they think about it they uh <laughs> they have seen me evolve through many diets so to them keto was another one and so they just uh went with it and then it evolved into keto vor, and I told them I'm taking these things out. So they went with it. And then just recently I was at a party and, and uh, friends of ours brought all these keto approved snacks and nuts and berries and seeds for me because they, they did it for me. They spent all that money for me to help me feel comfortable. And I said, I'm carnivore, I don't eat that anymore. <laughs> I felt so bad because they, they were trying to accommodate me, even though they don't eat that way, they could eat it too. But so I, I mentioned to my one friend in the kitchen as we were walking out and she said, so tell me all about your new diet. And I'm like, it's not a new diet. It's on the same spectrum. It's a ketogenic way of eating, but it's carnivore. It's hard to explain because I'm so far over here and they're all the way down here. And I have to understand that's where I was. And I have to use that lingo and that vocabulary and that vernacular. Uh, and I have to watch the words I say. I can't throw out all the knowledge that I have or they're, they're lost or they think I'm crazy. So um, it's tricky. Family and friends just deal with me. And they know I'm, they think I'm crazy or they think I'm, they think I'm extreme. And uh, even though they see that I got healthier, I, I've yet to have, only one family member keeps asking me more information, which is my younger brother, which is great. Every once in a while, he'll ask a couple of questions. I'm like, oh, he's thinking, this is great. This is great. Uh, people I don't know so much, uh, my YouTube audience and uh, just, uh, acquaintances in the neighborhood, they want to talk about it. They're like, wow, you look, you look thinner than you did last year. You know, they ask questions. So, and I have more confidence now that I'm past five years. I, I have confidence in my ability to explain when asked and I'm just feel stronger. Like when I go, I don't go to a restaurant that much, but when I go out, I am the person that has the conversation with the server and the, the cook a serious conversation and the people I'm with know it's going to happen. And I used to kind of be afraid to have the, I didn't want to embarrass them or me. I don't care anymore. I'm paying the money. 
for this steak. I'm going to have the conversation and they're going to listen to me. And maybe some of that will go in and they'll think about it. And I don't care anymore. I'm confident. And it's more about um, what I put in my body because I just will not. I, there, there are hard lines I draw on the sand and I just will not put seed oil in my body knowingly. Uh, I, I will not eat carbs and sugar. Um, and th those are my hard lines. Uh, if, if a little piece of a plant or something gets in there, I'm okay with that. That's a soft line because I don't have any issues with plants when I was on keto for, but you know, I, I try not to have it. So, uh, it's, it's evolved, Dave, uh, over, over the five years, it has evolved into my confidence level has gotten better when I talk to people. Hmm. So um, thinking about stuff like seed oils, right? So playing devil's advocate, there's a skeptic watching this okay. right now and they're thinking, okay, well, you're saying all this stuff, seed oils are bad. That's not what I've been told throughout my life from all the authorities on health. Um I've been told that we need to eat plants. I've been told that, you know, I've got to have my five a day or whatever it happens to be. Why is your way credible? Another really good question I wish someone would ask me. If some, one of my friends or family asked me that very question, First, I'd say, do you have a few minutes? Because I'd like to let you know some of the information that I learned. They know I'm a teacher and it's about knowledge. And I believe knowledge is power. And I would explain to them the knowledge I learned that I didn't know before about how seed oils, which they call vegetable oil, are made. And I, I won't go through the detail here with you unless you want me to explain it for the, for the listening base. But I would explain the details that I learned about how they're made in the factory uh, with the high heat, cleaned, degum, extracted with hexane, uh, that a polyunsaturated fatty acid molecule is missing hydrogen, so it's unsaturated and therefore very fragile with light, heat, and time. And by definition of how they're made in the factory with that high heat and then cleaned and degum with hexane, and extract it, it's already rancid. It's already denatured. The omega-6, and I have to explain that, that omega-6 and omega-3 for, for us to be healthy has to be in a one-to-one, -one, two-to-one, or three-to-one balance or ratio. And omega-6 is sky high, out of whack in these polyunsaturated fats. And they're in all the fast food. They're in almost all boxed and packaged processed foods. If you read the ingredients and look for them, you'll see. And then I, I, I give the list. Canola oil, which is from the rapeseed. Soybean oil, safflower oil, margarine, Crisco, rice bran, peanut oil, cottonseed oil. Uh, and, and all of these. And I actually, I have this with me right here. I have my little, my little list of of nose i have allergies i can't have this food <laughs> i list the oils because the average person just knows the word the phrase vegetable oil and they don't distinguish it from butter or beef tallow so that's how i would explain that if someone's willing to take the time to sit and listen to me from like a student to a teacher that's the only way i can explain it and i would tell them that because i have this knowledge of what it really is it's like you ring a bell and you can't unring it anymore i now have that knowledge i can't knowingly put that in my mouth knowing that it what now what does it do to the body now it creates oxidative stress inappropriate inflammation this is what caused my lower back pain i believe along with the carbs and sugar uh, for some people it causes arthritic symptoms it's just inflammation and that of course is the precursor to so many diseases inflammation so that's how I would share that with someone who asked me if, if they're willing to sit long enough and listen. <laughs> they sit 
through that, they 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 listen to your explanation. They go, okay, well that makes sense. So if I want to give carnivore a try, how how do I get started? All right, to to start with carnivore, I often say you're eating the standard world diet, standard American diet, and my personal advice is do not go cold turkey and do carnivore in one day. Take all plants, fruits, vegetables, carbs, and sugar, everything out in one day because our body, our, our sugar-loving gut bacteria that is being nourished and fed is now going to be deprived and you're going to have diarrhea. They're going to rebel. Uh, my electrolytes are going to be flushed out. Your electrolytes will be flushed out through your urine because for every molecule of of glucose, there's a molecule of water. And, I, on, on, and along with the water goes the potassium, the magnesium, and the sodium. So you want to do it gradually and you want to slowly take out First, you could take out the seed oil immediately. There's no withdrawal from that. But slowly take out your potatoes, your rice. Slowly take out the plants. Maybe have plants for the first month. Do your vegetables the first month. And just wean on the fruits because that's where the, the sugar is. And you just have a few berries a day if you have to. Kind of do what I did. I did it one year, three years, up to five years, but you can do it. I, I suggest people, I made a video for World Carnivore Month in January, and my suggestion was to do it over 30 days so that when you get to the end of the month, when you start the next month, you're completely plant-free and you're all carnivore. And your body had all those 31 days or 30 days to adjust. Um, and then I have to talk about coffee. If you're a coffee drinker, there's another uh, way to, to quit coffee because of the adenosine receptors in our brain and the vasodilation headaches that they're going to get if they stop immediately. There's a way to quit coffee without the headaches. And I did that too. So I would encourage people to, to ease into carnivore slowly. And along the way, watch videos, read books, seek mm. the answers to your questions. You have a question about something, there is an answer. And I would refer them to particular people who have given me specific answers because that's where I got my knowledge. And that's how I would tell, tell somebody to do it if they, if they really wanted to try it. And, no, nice. and, and also knowing that each person is different. My journey is not this person's journey. This, this one may have PCOS. This one may have, uh, you know, this is a woman. This is a man. This one, this one, this woman's in her seventies. This one's in her thirties. It's, it's all. So they, they may come later with questions and they're all unique to their physiology and biology. And so, uh, certain, it's not a one size fits all when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're transitioning it has to take time for each person to try it. What for, for each person to find their own path. Yeah, nicely said. Um, so, John, can you tell us a bit about your channel? What kind of videos do you have um, and what kind of stuff you got coming up and how can we find you? Okay. Um, my channel is called Carnivore Teacher, uh, 1965, which is the year I was born, and uh, or just Carnivore Teacher. And I... I uh, on my YouTube, the way I make my YouTube channel, it's kind of how I started five years ago. Um, I love to bicycle ride during the sunrise because we live in Florida. It's always warm and uh, experience the sunrise and nature. And I always have my earbuds in and I'm listening to Chafee or Barry or some of the, some of the people, maybe Dave Mack, you know, listening to an interview and, uh, I listen while I'm watching. I'm an auditory learner. That's my preferenced learning channel is auditory anyway. Most people are visual. And uh, something really hits me, uh, an aha moment. I have this major epiphany. I actually have to pause it. I have it attached to my bike there, so I'm not holding the phone. And then I actually click the microphone in my notes, and I say it so that I keep a running list of ideas and then I will come back to my recording studio in my house and I uh, 
go to my topics and that's where I get my ideas. These are the ideas that changed my life, that get, get me excited. Uh, things I didn't know that I'm like, wow, I'm going to make that change and apply it to my life. Those are the topics of all of my videos. When you watch my videos, um, some of my videos are um, how to make a food product, how to make bone broth, how to how to poach an egg. Um, and then some are like this. Oh, I go live every Wednesday night with the carnivore soldier, you know, Larry. And uh He's, he's graciously allowed me to come on every Wednesday now. We have this banter back and forth. He comes from the, from the, uh, the soldier aspect of it, the firefighter, policeman, first responder, soldier. And I come from the teacher side and people ask questions and we respond differently and answer questions. And he likes that. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to go on with him. So uh, they can find me on YouTube, a carnivore teacher. Uh, I post them also to Facebook, to X, formerly known as Twitter, to Threads, and to Instagram, and LinkedIn, believe it or not. And I have different audiences from each one, which is kind of cool. So my channel's starting to grow. Um, I accidentally deleted the whole channel. <laughs> I had thousands of followers, and I did a big boo-boo, and uh, I was trying to clean up the channel because there were two YouTube channels and I deleted both of them by accident and I had to start all over from scratch. So um, I'm under a thousand subscribers now, but I'll, I'll get back up again. You know, I had everything saved on a hard drive. So that's where people can find me. That's what my videos are about and where I get my ideas. And I, I encourage anybody to, uh, to check me out, subscribe if you wish. Um, I'm not in it to make money. I'm in it to pass on the knowledge. If, if you, like I say at the end of all of my videos, if you like this content, please click the thumbs up. Uh, no pressure. Uh, I, this, this gives me purpose. M my purpose. I'm, go I'm going to Hack Your Health, KetoCon. I went to Low Carb USA in Boca. Um, I went to Orlando. I like to go to one or two events a year and I learn so much more talk about epiphanies and aha moments I get so excited so this is this is my shtick this is my uh, my retirement gig and I'm very happy to share what I think is priceless information nutrition and good health nice very nice well John thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us I really appreciate your time Thank you for having me, Dave. I really appreciate the opportunity.